Hello, my dear ladies. I address you as a group, but actually you are all quite diverse and unique. You span the gamut on just about every characteristic. That's one of the things I love most about tailoring menopause management for you. Nothing is exactly the same for any two women. And today we're going to talk about the fact that cancers are as different as we are. As a society, we tend to generalize a lot. In fact, generalizing is so common that you're considered odd if you tend to be very specific. Most people simply refer to cancer as one entity. The very word cancer incites fear. But the word cancer actually encompasses many different diseases. Although all cancers belong to the same category of disease, there are over 100 different types of cancer. So today I'm going to talk about the vast differences between different types of cancers. In the last video, I taught you about the common characteristics of all cancers. But there's a flip side. Despite the fact that all cancers have some characteristics in common, they also have distinct characteristics that make them behave differently. So you could say that cancers have multiple different personalities, and that's what I'll discuss in this video. I do not present this material in this format in my book, regardless of whether you have the first edition or the second edition. Instead, I can find my discussion to each different kind of cancer individually. And we'll be getting to the individual types of cancers in these videos too, but today I'm just giving you some cancer basics. Videos 309 through this one, which is 313, are all on cancer basics. So even if you have my book, you will benefit greatly by watching all the videos on the basics of cancer in general. They will help you to better understand individual cancers when we get to them. I like to think of cancers as being a whole lot like people. Just think of all the people you've encountered in your lifetime. Specifically, think about their differing personalities. There are people who are quiet and introverted, and there are those who are loud and extroverted. Some people are rule followers, whereas others are rule breakers. Some are very productive, while others are, have impaired function. You know people who are predictable and people who are unpredictable. Some people are gentle and others are aggressive. Some plod along slowly while others move very quickly. All these personality characteristics define us in terms of who we are. And you know, most of these characteristics are really present at birth. The fact is that over the course of our lives, we really don't change much. I always told my pregnant patients that their unborn child would behave the same way out here as it did in utero, and they were always shocked to discover that I was right. Babies who are active in utero are active in life, and babies who are docile in utero are docile in life. Think about the personalities of your own children when they were tiny. They're probably the same today. And if you have more than one child, your children probably have very different personalities. Mine is very different from my brother's. My mom tells a story about me that dates way back to before I was even one year old. My father was in the military, and as is typical for many military families, we moved a lot. So I was born in Germany. And before I was even one year old, my mom carried me into the den where there was a big chest, the bottom drawer of which held all my toys. Now, in addition to the fact that my father was a strict military man, my mom was somewhat like Martha Stewart. <laughs> Every 
everything was absolutely always in its place. There was no such thing as children's toys strewn around our house. They and every other kind of item were always put away in an orderly manner. <laughs> so my toys were in the bottom drawer of this chest. Well, my mom opened up the drawer and sat me down in front of it. And she says that she has never seen a small child tackle <laughs> a job like I did that day. She says I immediately started reorganizing the drawer. I pulled out all the toys and worked ardently on putting them back in some sort of order. <laughs> She was perplexed at my behavior and just sat on the sofa across the room watching me. A full hour and a half went by and she says that I never even looked up. I was busy at work. <laughs> you know, little pre-toddler children don't have very long attention spans, <laughs> but I sure did. I had a job to do and I wasn't going to stop until I finished it. Little children also don't have much manual dexterity, so it takes them a long time to handle objects and stuff. But that didn't deter me either. I just kept working on my project. Who knows <laughs> what kind of organizational scheme I had in mind. <laughs> but. After an hour and a half, my mom realized that it was lunchtime. So she walked over and picked me up to take me into the kitchen for lunch. And she says, I threw a massive temper tantrum. <laughs> it was the first and only temper tantrum I'd ever had, then or since. And it actually scared her. She was so taken aback that she just set me back down in front of that drawer. And she says that I immediately went right back to my project and was as happy as I could be. <laughs> so my mom walked back and sat on the sofa and just watched me work. And I continued working nonstop on my project for another hour. And as my mom watched, she said out loud, that child is on a mission. I'm just going to stay out of her way. <laughs> and that's exactly what she did. She says I raised myself and I never really even needed her. And after I had placed all the toys back into the drawer in whatever constituted order for me at the time, <laughs> I crawled over to her ready to go eat lunch. At that young age, my mom figured me out. She realized right then that I was going to be an industrious, focused, determined person who didn't want anyone impeding my productivity. She saw that I would be very independent. And I actually think it hurt her feelings <laughs> that I didn't need her more. <laughs> but I didn't realize that until I was grown. <laughs> In any case, I'm still the very same today. As long as I have a great, big, difficult, long-term project, I'm as happy as I can be. <laughs> and I'm the most organized person I know. Everything in my life is alphabetized, color-coded, arranged perfectly, etc. So my personality governs everything about me. All of my behaviors are consistent with my personality. I'm independent, introverted, peaceful, very productive, incredibly predictable, kind, and efficient. Well, cancers have personalities too. They do not all behave in the same manner. And just as people fall on a spectrum of personality characteristics, so do cancers. In fact, you can classify cancers using the very same spectrum of personality traits that we use to classify people. 
Just as with people, cancers span the gamut with regard to their personalities across all of the following spectrums. Here you see six separate personality spectrums, one each for introverted versus extroverted, rule follower versus rule breaker, productive versus impaired, predictable versus unpredictable, gentle versus aggressive, and slow versus fast. And each spectrum is color highlighted from green to yellow to orange to red. Now, certain personality traits are more desirable than others for humans. And the very same thing is true for cancers. But the personality traits that are desirable for a human and the personality traits that are desirable for a cancer are not always one and the same. On these spectrums, I have delineated the more desirable cancer traits in green and the least desirable cancer traits in red. So a cancer that is more quiet and introverted, so to speak, is preferable to one that is loud and extroverted. A rule-following cancer is more desirable than a rule-breaking cancer. A cancer that enables you to remain productive is a better than one that impairs you. A predictable cancer is preferable to an unpredictable cancer. A gentle cancer is more tolerable than an aggressive cancer. And a slow-growing cancer is better than a fast-growing cancer. Human personalities are determined by many different things. Both nature and nurture contribute. So while we all come into the world with a particular personality that is somewhat fixed, there are environmental factors that can shape it. So, if you had to guess what determines the personality of a cancer, what would you guess? Ah, oh, now you're seeing why you need to watch my videos in order. Remember this list of cell factors from videos 309 and 311 on normal cells and abnormal cells? Everything on the list of factors that defines a normal cell or an abnormal cell comprises the personality of a cancer cell. Depending on how all these things come together, different cancers will behave in different ways. In reality, it's as if they have personalities. For instance, prostate cancer tends to be a very introverted, rule-following, predictable, gentle, and slow cancer that does not interfere with basic prostate function. On the other hand, pancreatic cancer tends to be very extroverted, rule-breaking, unpredictable, aggressive, fast-growing, and impairs function of the digestive tract. Beyond these basic descriptions of cancer personalities for different organs, every organ can have many different kinds of cancers, all with many different kinds of personalities. It all depends on the kind of cell that begins the cancer in the first place. So some prostate cancers are worse than others, and some pancreatic cancers are better than others. The lesson of this video is that every cancer is different, and how it is different depends on many different factors. It is a huge misconception that all cancers are equal in their behavior or impact. So, while many people often refer to cancer as a lump, you cannot lump the lumps. Every cancerous lump is unique. This is why you should never compare one cancer to another or use Dr. Google to anticipate what to expect for the cancer. You absolutely have to tailor everything to the individual cancer. No two lumps are the same. You just can't lump the lumps. All right, that does it for today. Now you know the cancer basics, and next week we'll start talking about the emotional reaction to cancer. I sure hope you decide to schedule a consultation with me. I would love to meet you. And I think you can already see that I am passionate about helping you. So go to menopausetaylor.me to schedule. And you'll see all sorts of other things on my website too. Webinars of the entire education, 
fun articles I've written on menopause manners, an entire store where you can buy educational resources, including the things your male partner needs to know about menopause. You won't find nearly as much on social media, but you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I invite you to subscribe right now. And then come back next week for more. Bye! <laughs>